Hey guys, Wall for Games coming at you from my stream support playlist where I normally would bring you the best tips and tricks for all the broadcasters, streamers, and cameras out there. However, I'm doing something a little bit different today. When I stream, I get asked all the time, what are some games that I recommend? Well, I felt obliged to answer that and I'm gonna do it right now and it's coming at you in a two-parter. Now, all these games are eights and ups, so the only way I could find out to do it fairly was actually just do an alphabetical order. So none of these games rank higher than the others, but they're just some of my personal favorites that I think anybody would enjoy playing or you could buy for somebody out there that's totally into games. So I hope you enjoy it, and I will put a link in the description all below if you'd like to click through and see where you can find the cheapest price for it. Enjoy. Assassin's Creed Origins Assassin's Creed Origin is an action-adventure stealth game played from the third-person perspective. Players complete quests and scenarios to progress through the story, earn experience points, and acquire new skills. Outside of quests, players can freely roam the open world environment on foot, horseback, camelback, or by boat to explore new locations. Completing optional quests will unlock new weapons and equipment. The new Assassin's Creed comes with a revised combat mechanic which overhauls the overall play style, which allows you to learn the attributes of individual weapons to tailor to your own style. For any fan of Assassin's Creed, it's a must own. Disney The Afternoon Collection from Capcom The Disney Afternoon Collection is a compilation of video games by Capcom. Any kid that was in the early 90s easily remembers DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, Tailspin, and Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. The collection comes jam-packed with six 8-bit games, DuckTales from 1989, DuckTales 2 from 1993, Tailspin from 1991, Darkwing Duck from 1992, Chippendale's Rescue Rangers from 1990, and Chippendale's Rescue Rangers 2 from 1994. This collection is just perfect for anybody looking to relive any nostalgia factor they had when they were an early 90s kid. If you want to go above and beyond the Disney collection, you can pick up DuckTales Remastered. It's the same exact game as DuckTales, however, it's gone through a huge overhaul with beautiful streamlined graphics. I highly recommend picking this up on the digital marketplace, for you can find it on Xbox and PlayStation. It's a good grab, and it's always usually on discount. Call of Duty WW2 Call of Duty needs no introduction. Everybody knows what it is, but if you're buying the game for somebody and you're not a gamer yourself, Call of Duty is a first-person shooter game, but this one's a little bit different. It goes back to its roots by being boots-on-the-ground gameplay style. The game comes with an in-depth first-person story-style game that is set in European theater of war. The campaign is sent around the center of a squad of the 1st Division and follows their battles in the Western Front. The real reason you pick up Call of Duty is simply for the multiplayer. Get ready to waste hours and hours getting salty with your friends. This Call of Duty is different from the others as it foregoes the create a class system for a more refined divisions feature where you can have infantry, airborne, armored, mountain, and expeditionary. The game also took a hint from Overwatch by coming complete with a escort mission where you escort a tank from point A to point B to win. Also backed by popular man is Nazi zombie modes that everybody will be excited to grind through and see all the secrets that will come out. If you're a Call of Duty fanatic just like me, it's a must own for your collection to play with all of your friends online. Cuphead. Cuphead is a run and gun game which features a branching level sequence and is based around continuous boss fights. Players can purchase more weapons and charms from the shop using coins collected from the run and gun levels and bosses. These charms can be used to give players special abilities like extra life. The game also has a two-player local cooperative mode that allows another player to play as Mugman, making this the perfect game for friends. Don't be fooled by the Golden Age cartoon style of this game. This game is hard as balls. It gives you a great challenge as you play through all the levels. It'll take you a moment to master, but once you get it, it is a fun game to play. I highly recommend it, and it has a great price point. Pick it up. The Darkest Dungeon The Darkest Dungeon is a role-playing game in which the player manages a roster of heroes and adventurers to explore the dungeon and fight creatures within. Prior to entering the dungeon, the player can use the facilities in town to dismiss or recruit new heroes, send heroes to perform various acts that will heal them, gain new combat abilities or camping skills, reduce stress, 
or remove any afflictions that they incurred while in a dungeon. You can also buy and sell a new equipment to help outfit the heroes. This is probably one of the best turn-based strategy games I have played this year. I don't want to give too much away. I'm just going to let you know you're in for a grind and a challenge. You will love the animation and even more the gritty design that's behind everything in this game. Go ahead and give it a try. You don't want to miss out on this one. The Evil Within 2 Similar to its predecessor, this game is straight up survival horror done at its finest. Played from a third-person perspective, the player assumes control of Detective Sebastian, who must descend into the world of Union to rescue his daughter Lily. What makes the sequel so enticing is it gives you more of an open-world concept, which allows you to explore the map freely and complete side objectives that gives you insight to what happened in Union and helps give you abilities and new weapons to upgrade to advance your adventure. With the new incorporated open-world style, this allows players to develop their own way of playing in the game. You can play a little more stealthy or you can play a little more action oriented. It's completely up to the player. What makes this game so enticing? Well, it's simply the art direction. It is beautiful. It's done perfectly with all the lighting and the textures. This will make you have jump scares and nightmares. It is awesome. If you're looking for a double whammy, go ahead and pick up Evil Within, the first game. You should be able to find it in a bargain bin for fairly cheap. I highly recommend that game too to give you a little bit more of a backstory on Detective Sebastian. Final Fantasy 15. Not much needs to be said about Final Fantasy. This is the 15th installment. If you haven't played a Final Fantasy, this might be the one to get you into it. It is simply a gorgeous, beautiful game to behold. It's different than the other based games because it has a real-time battle system that you get to actually map the controller buttons to, so that way each button is mapped to an attack, defend, or item. As you progress through the game, you unlock new weapons, new skills, new players, a bunch of different host of things that help you advance the story and push it along. Go ahead and give this one a try. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Hellblade. Hellblade basically became critically acclaimed the moment it hit the market. It's a very different type of game that you're not normally used to playing. It's a cinematic, psychological, horror adventure game that sets it apart from the market. Without giving too much away, you basically play on the psychotic manifestations of the main character's mind that come to reality and fruition. It's all based on Celtic and Norse mythology. Horizon Zero Dawn Horizon Zero Dawn is an action role-playing game played from a third-person perspective. Players take control of a hunter and archer as she ventures through a post-apocalyptic land ruled by robotic creatures simply known as machines. As you battle your way through hordes of enemies and towering monstrosities, you will find yourself in a world that you've never seen before. This game has been recognized for best original game and has won numerous awards in 2015 and 16. Give it a shot. This probably will be your most favorite game that you've played in quite some time that has an original concept. Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle This game is a turn-based tactical role-playing video game developed by publisher Ubisoft for the Nintendo Switch. The game is a crossover between Super Mario and Raving Rabbids franchise. Both feature a single and cooperative gameplay style. I myself was extremely pleased when I got my hands on this game to play. I was addicted on the cooperative turn-based style gameplay that it brings, and it has a little bit of kooky quirkiness that makes you smile and want to continue playing the game through and through. This is a great one for any Mario or Rabbids fan out there. Pick this one up for sure. Super Mario Odyssey. I just want to take a quick moment and talk about this game. As I'm editing this video, this game just came out yesterday. I can't see anything good or bad about it because there really hasn't been that much of a review on it, but it's Mario. I mean, how bad can it be? I'm going to assume it's a solid 8 and up. So I'm going to recommend this with two thumbs up. Near Automata is an action role-playing game in which players take control of combat androids and venture across an open-world environment. What set Near Automata aside from itself from the normal games in the marketplace was its fluid gameplay style of hack and slash. It may seem chaotic, but the way the buttons and camera work all are super fluid. There is also more than one type of battle system in here. Sometimes you'll be in a 3D environment, sometimes you'll be in a hack and slash, sometimes you're in a light rail gun, and sometimes you're even hacking into 
another computer to play the game from a 2D perspective. The shining star in this game is the outlandish huge boss battles and environments that you will encounter. Put just a few hours into this game and you'll be hooked. Neo. Neo is an action role playing game set in Japan during the year 1600 with players taking the role of an Irish samurai warrior named William. The player guides William on missions through enclosed environments fighting both human enemies and supernatural beings. The best way I like to describe this game is Dark Souls for the Feudal Era. If you like fighting games that are based around hack and slash combat, this game will be simply just perfect for you. It's no easy rollover. This will give you a very tough challenge with how much you have to run, dodge, hit, think about where you're going to go, and then muster up another attack and think about how you're going to retreat. It is a perfect game for anybody who likes to think with their fingers and on their feet. Get your extra controller ready because you might be snapping through a couple of these because this game has been known to be a rage inducer. Have fun with this one. Hey, thanks for watching. Just a reminder, this is part one. I will put part two up shortly there for you. Make sure to check it out. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing. Also, if you liked any of these, I put a link in the description below so that we can click through and get right to it for the cheapest price. I will see you guys in part two coming up next.